All righty. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. The title for this teaching is Compassion. Now, some of the verses that we're going to be looking at is Psalm chapter 51. Verse 1 and Colossians chapter 3, verses 8 through 17. And it's October the 12th, 2023. Renee had reached out, said uh, she probably wasn't going to make it, but. It's kind of up in the air, um, and you got to be kidding me that these, oh, look at that, Valerie, hello to you, Valerie, I hope you are doing what, I hope you're doing swimmingly, I have no idea, um, and there is Renee, and so I'll have to keep an eye on these comments, I might have to put my do like I did last week and watch the comments off of my phone because it wasn't feeding them through so um, and I yep it's not feeding through oh I have no idea what's going on with this thing this is just All right, D, you wonderful person, you. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, uh, see, now. Rachel's here, too. Hi, Rachel. Blessings to you. Hmm. You know, Rachel. Feel God's hand, the palm of his hand on your forehead, and and his his fingers kind of on your head, so like that. And so you receive. Receive that. Sure. All right, let's see what else we got. Uh, Renee says, I have a beautiful feeling about many re revelations that I will be receiving tonight. Wonderful. And Jeff, well, see, now we can get started. Jeff has commented. He's here. Hello, Vicky, with Jeff. And, oh, I don't remember uh, your dog's name. Um, I'm going to, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll get it right. Is it like Dilly? <laughs> Jeff's a giddy up. All right, Rachel, thank you. Yes, I receive it. See, that's good. That, All right. Come on. Yeah, it is Dilly. Woohoo! <clears throat> Come on, man. Um, all right. So, <clears throat> this one's going to be, a, um, I'm going to say this one's going to be a little interesting because for those that, that have uh, asked to, uh, to get the verses that I print off, because if you come to our house, um, I print these off. And then um, I hand them out, and that's just what I've done. And uh, for on here, or for people that um, have asked, I uh, email them out, or I can um, send them through um, Facebook Messenger. 
Um, but typically, we will start at the top and we'll just go down on through the verses. Uh, with tonight with us talking about about compassion. I mean, there's um, three pages. You got front and the back and the front. So, however you want to count that. But tonight, today, whenever it is that you're actually going to watch this, um, we're going to do things a little bit differently. I have Psalm 51.1 as one of the verses, and Colossians 3, 8 through 17. So we're going to look at both of those first. And then... If it's right, we'll look at some other verses. But compassion. If I were to ask you to describe compassion, what is compassion? Because I did not put a, a, a biblical definition down in the sheets. And uh, when I had asked this on uh, Sunday... I believe one of the people had said that uh, it is uh, like empathy. And then they proceeded to, because uh, I asked them, I believe, what is empathy? Because you don't get to use a word. All right, let's see. D, thank you, D. She said, sympathy for other suffering. I I would say that your definition D more dry um, describes empathy because the one thing that so there's um, Empathy and compassion, and empathy and compassion, they both, like Dee said, sympathy for other suffering. So it's like you can feel, you can experience, you you have this, this um, I'll almost say a care for them. Uh, Renee says, understanding their pain and or problems and loving them. That's what D said is sympathy for others suffering. Empathy. Because it does not have action. When you look at compassion, um, it, it takes what empathy is and then it puts it puts action to that. So I can have sympathy for what you're suffering. I have an understanding of your pain, your problems. If I get that and if I don't do anything with it, well, then it's just empathy. But when I put action to it, then those feelings that I take then turn into compassion. Now, this might mess with you a little bit, but come on, D says it has action in my heart and what I do. See, and that's and I love that because that is if I can if there was uh, one of the people this last week they were saying, well, but how could you not? If you have this sympathy for somebody, if you can feel their pain, how could you not do something? To help them. And I think that's kind of where D, what, what D is saying is, it has action in my heart and, uh, and what I do. And so you do have this, I feel your pain and I'm like compelled to help you not have as much pain. Or at minimum sit with you in it so you're not alone. And Renee 
excuses. For me, I think it's understanding why they do the things they do and forgiving. Okay, so compassion. Um, um, which, Jeff says, Vicky said it's something <laughs> women have for men. <laughs> She's not wrong. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. Oh, Vicky didn't say that. She said what they don't have. For men. <laughs> That's almost funnier. <laughs> but no, I get it. But yes, either one of those actually could work, but because what you what what we're we're looking at is this uh, like what uh, Renee had said was for me I think it's understanding why they do what they do and, and forgiving and so um, just a little, just a, a a side note there Jeff I'm just agreeing with your wife. Because that's just a smart move. <laughs> um, so, when we look at compassion, I said, well, what does it look like? Well, I, 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 sometimes I can feel your pain. And when I can do that, and it produces some action in me that I, I otherwise would not have taken. Compassion. So Renee, when she says, you know, I think it's understanding why they do the things that they do and forgiving. So that's compassion. What Renee, I think, is... Is 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 um, really sane, which is when you when you read through verses that talk about compassion, a good I think a good definition of compassion is love. So now, when we see compassion, and if we can understand, let's see, D says absolutely we can feel their pain. Yeah. And so, if we can, if if we, come on, Rachel says showing the love like Jesus. See, so, so now. We have this, so if compassion can be defined as love, there we go. So Renee says yes, and that's a hard one for me right now. Hold that thought. And Valerie says loving them through whatever they are going through. Amen. That includes ourselves. Just saying. So, I think for the most part, absolutely I agree with you, D. D says, I believe that's a gift from God. And so, yes. Yep, compassion. Yep. And so, now, if, if Renee says, you know what, I'm, I'm struggling with this. That's a hard one for me to grab. Well, Mr. Vogel, hello to you, sir. You and Irma and your guys' cats and kittens and other people that are at the, at the homestead. Hello to you all. Good evening. 
So if we can grab a hold of and see, if it doesn't fit, fine. But if when we read compassion, if it makes sense to be able to define compassion as love, because between the Old Testament and the New Testament, there was a lot of verses that used the word compassion or compassionate or whatever. Looking at the biblical definitions, <clears throat> as long as we have this 1 Corinthians 13 understanding of love, all right, I'm hearing some of you. It's like, well, well, we, we haven't read that for a little while. What does what does 1 Corinthians 13 say about love again? Because I think I kind of know it, but what what does it what does it actually say? Oh, let's see. Let's start in verse four. It says, "Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag, and is not arrogant." Love does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Does not take into account a wrong suffered. Does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Okay, so that's kind of a... I think when we see compassion, I think we can, in a general statement, I think that we can see that as love. And as I've said before, sometimes love is... Uh, sometimes love looks like I'm not going to be in your life because that's love. Because if I am in your life, it's not going to be good for you or me or the people around us that are going to have the fallout. And so... I'm not even going to have to say I love you from a distance because I don't have to. But my action, so now I can look at you and I can see that you're in pain. And me being in your life may cause you more pain. Maybe forever, maybe just for right now, maybe for what that's what you're going through, whatever it is. So if I really understand, even kind of really understand, my identity in who God says I am, well, God is love, and he's created me in his image, so now, and he gave me the responsibility of being an ambassador for Christ. So we have John 3.16 that says, For God so loved the world. Not just believers, not just the Jews. God so loved the world. God so loved mankind human beings that he did these things he has this emotion this feeling and then his action from that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him. So we have this compassion in the verse of John 3.16. Showing love. But if 
I am, if I, if I have, so, you know, if, if I have any sort of an understanding of my identity, my, my who I am, and have any grasp of the 1 Corinthians 13 love, And if I know that me being in your life is only going to cause you more pain and sorrow and suffering, because I might very well inflict it on you. I mean, if I know that, well, to show you that I love you, is to not be in your life and not and to do things to make sure that you are not in my life. See, that just makes sense. And yet, the worldly understanding is absolutely not, Todd. If you love somebody, you need to be in their life and you need to do whatever it takes and you need to put them in a headlock maybe and just... No, because if I make things worse for you, why? Why would I stay? Oh, if I don't understand who I am and whose I am. Then I'm not acting in love, but I'm acting out of maybe a... Uh, worldly love because now my love that I'm trying to force on you is control and manipulation I am going to do what it takes to change you to be the person that I think you should be that you should have the life that I think you should have and I'm going to tell you that I love you and that's why I'm doing it that's not compassion. That's a worldly, screwed up maybe compassion. But that's not this godly compassion. So now li listen to this. Psalm. Psalm 51, verse 1. It says, Be gracious to me, O God, according to your loving kindness according to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Oh, come on, Jeff says midnight. Ooh. I mean, think about this. I mean, oh. Psalm 51, verse 1, again, you could be saying, you could say this to God right now. Mr. John, come on, man. Thanks for uh, throwing out a comment there so then we knew that you were watching. Blessings to you and your family. So you could say this. Be gracious to me. So you're talking to God. You got your prayer life. Maybe maybe you put your hands together. You got your eyes closed. You got your head bowed. You're on your knees. You're on your face. You got your hands up high and your head's tilted back. You got your eyes open. What, it, eh, don't get too caught up in that, really. However it is. So you're talking to God. Just as God showed compassion to Noah and his family for following his commands before the flood. And yet Noah wasn't all that good of a person. Renee! Hi, Renee. It's 
see. The Renee that just said hi. You can already feel it, can't you? God says, let her know. Help her if she doesn't already experience it. Yeah, she said, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. See, I, I feel God's hug. Feel his embrace. Another action. It's another um, example of compassion. Hugs, I'm telling you, so good. So, if you pray this, Listen to the words that you're speaking, that I'm saying that you can, but really get the words. It says, so you talk, be gracious to me, O oh God, according to your loving kindness, God. Be gracious to me, God. A, not according to me, not according to my doing. God, be gracious, grace, be gracious to me according to your loving kindness, God. According to the greatness of your compassion. Blot out my shortcomings. I mean, that could just make you weep. That could just make you a puddle. If you really, really can accept those words. Because it has nothing to do with your performance of good to be able to get. The only performance that you have in this is you screwed up, right? Blot out my transgressions. Blot out my shortcomings. Blot out me missing the mark. Blot out me not living up to my standard. Blot out... God, God, not Joe, not Fred, not Sally, not, no, God, because truly, really what weight does it carry if anybody else blots out your transgressions? Really? They carry no weight, or at least they shouldn't. Because if they do, then they're your God instead of God. God, blot out my missing the mark. Come on. See? They carry none. There should be no weight. And yet, are you living life dictated? by somebody else? Do they have control over your actions? I was talking with somebody the other day and they're like, oh man, Todd, you know, things really got rough, you know, the police had to be called and um, it really, yeah, this person is lying and they spread this and that person and this and these and that. And you know what? It really, <clears throat> it really got me thinking that I think I might want to move. And I said, no. 
Because when you take action based off of somebody else, for the most part, because of them, ultimately, they are your God. Because you bow down to them. Now, if you're going to move, move because God's like, all right, you've had enough. Not because they say that you've had enough, but God's like, all right, come here. That, you taking action based on what God says, rather than what other people are saying. We get this. Do you guys, did you feel it? Psalm 51, verse 1, be gracious to me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Now, I believe that it was this verse that this week, when we read it, somebody here said, um, if this is God, I'm made in his image. So then this is who I should be as well. Because it was either this Psalm 51 verse 1, or it was Psalm 103, verse 8, which says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. It was probably that one. But Psalm 51, verse 1, what a prayer. What a prayer. And you don't have to just do it at bedtime, do it when you wake up, you, know, you kneel by your bed, whatever. However you do it, that's beautiful. Oh, look at that. Tabitha. Miss Tabitha. Wonderful, wonderful Tabitha. Thank you for tuning in. Tell everyone in your household hello from not only me, but from all of us. If you want a prayer, Psalm 51, verse 1. If you're struggling with what to think about and what to say to God, oh God, be gracious to me, oh God. Oh God, thank you for being gracious to me. God, I thank you that according to your loving kindness, you are gracious to me. Thank you, God, that you do not use me as the measuring stick for how your goodness comes to me. God, I thank you that it's not me that determines your goodness to me. God, I thank you that the... the the way that it's measured, the, the, the how it's measured is by your loving kindness. Come on, Renee said, man, I really needed that one. Good. Oh, God, thank you that you are gracious to me. It's your loving kindness that determines that. Now, would you need grace if you didn't screw up? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't need mercy. You wouldn't need grace. And then he says, according to the greatness of your compassion, 
blot out my transgressions. So there's the action. God, you love me. How do I know? Because you told me. The action that you take, God, thank you for blotting out my shortcomings. God, I thank you. That's where I get to live. God, I thank you that you're gracious to me according to. So the boundaries for your grace, God, not you. I don't, you know what? If you don't want to play by the rules that God has set, that's on you, not on me. God, I thank you that according, so the boundaries, the borders, the ditches, the curbs, the fence, the wall, whatever you want to say, according to. So that, so the measurement, how it's going to be judged, is this too high? Is this too small? Is this too big? Is it? according to so there's there's that so it is going to be determined how much you get based on if you were as good as you should have been today i'm just saying thank goodness that's not the case because if we just take a little rabbit trail, I know I don't usually do it, but you know, if we just take a little rabbit trail, if we look at that today, I wasn't in such a good place today. Um, this whole week, I've been really busy. Work-wise. And just life and all, it's all good. But um, with my business, right? I'm a behavioral. I'm a behavioral financial advisor. I have my own business. I work out of my home. Come on, man. See, you know, they just I feel the love. Jeff says, "Talk to us, buddy." Whew. So, and life is good. There is no way that you can cut it any different but I have a certain expectation and when I have this expectation I set it based on what you tell me you're going to provide for me so I don't give you how you need to interact with me or what you need to um, give to me that's not my my expectation. I don't that that to me my brain I I I I don't get that. Instead, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to find out what you're telling me that you will be able to provide. And well, that becomes my benchmark whether you're achieving that or not. So my livelihood is based on me me doing stuff, right? You know, it's so I ran into a challenge today and I reached out for some help to be able to try to figure out how to still make it work. And the 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 help that I received on the other end of my phone was basically tough hop sucks to be you now those words weren't used and i might have thought a few other things but so 
it has taken a while to get to this part and i'm thinking we got it locked in it's 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 a done deal and it's all good and then it's just like uh oh how can how can we make this work i know i'll reach out to somebody that the benchmark has been given to me that they are here to help and their response to me was your sol man and for those of you that don't know sol is so out of luck for some reason some of you have have a different understanding of sol and i i don't i don't i don't get it but yeah and so there was one point that i'm like all right i'm gonna have to rip somebody's head off that's just how this is gonna work it did we've got to that point and so god says not in this situation but god tells us he says my grace to you and for you is not dependent on your action good deal because when we really when we think we really need his grace it's because our action is not such that life is all sunshine and roses rainbows and unicorns whatever now i am it see i don't um i i get to experience these emotions because god gave us emotions and my compassion is <laughs> the one Renee said we had the same week I think <laughs> I needed a bucket of grace this week come on see and so so we're like doing you know if we looked at our in a mirror it'd be like well we're I'm definitely not a Christian and yet it's not our unit of measurement. Psalm 51.1 says, Be gracious to me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. Now, if I'm just like beside myself, ready to really go off, and it's really not good when that happens it doesn't matter who you are but it's really not good and those are the times that we need to remember this the most because at that point you're not thinking Oh man, I am a child of God. I am loved by the king. I can do no wrong. I am all that. That's not what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh man, I probably shouldn't have thought that. That's not very Christian of me. Man, am I backsliding again? Did I really believe in the first place? Is my heart right? Man, what's going on? What? <clears throat> I'm telling you, I'm speaking to you because that's what happens when we get there. I'm just telling you, 
those things are not what we should be going after and thinking. We can think them, but then we let them go. Because instead we go, let's see. Oh, that's right. Um, Ray said, God said he wants none to perish. And he told me that today. I needed to have compassion. So this compassion, right? So my compassion towards this other person that was on the phone with me that basically said, tough up. When I was looking for help to solve a situation that I was looking to solve. Let's just go with that. My compassion, right? Because because Ray, Ray, Renee, 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 Ray said that we need to we need to have compassion. You know that we you know, he, he doesn't want any to, any to perish. And so my compassion, right? So I can feel the pain. I want to show some pain. My compassion is when I call for help, I'm not talking to that person. I'm not calling that person for help. That is compassion. Yes, it is. Because the person on the other side of this phone <clears throat> is not. Come on. They're not going to read that in a minute from Jeff. They're, they're going to receive compassion from me. By me not talking with them. At least not right now. So Jeff says, boy, I've been looking for words to describe my day today. And you're proving to me that God is using you to speak to me and for me. Come on. And then Renee says, when I am weak, he is strong. Thank goodness. Oof. And I am perfectly fine with understanding that I am always weak. When I show my strength, it shows my sonship. Not that I am strong. It shows my sonship, the fact that he calls me his child. And that's where my strength comes from. And then Ray, Renee, agreed with Jeff. Come on. Jeff's reply to Renee when I'm weak, he is strong, thank goodness. Jeff says, that's amazing grace. How sweet the sound. So we get this. So, so he says, be gracious to me. Oh, wait a minute. Before we start there, down that road. Rachel says, yes, compassion can be setting boundaries, and boundaries are a form of love when they are looked at in healthy ways as a form of love for the other person and oneself. Yes. I agree. But too often we use boundaries to control and manipulate people. I'll let you behind this boundary. Everybody else has to stay out over there. I'll bring you in as long as you do this, don't do this. Well, that's... not using boundaries correctly. So anyway.
God, uh, be gracious to me, O oh God, according to your loving kindness. If we can really grab a hold of the fact that it's not based on my performance or your performance. It's according to his, according to God the Father. God the Father's loving kindness. I'm not even talking about Jesus or Holy Spirit. We're talking about God the Father. His loving kindness. And what did it say again, John? 3, for chapter 3, verse 16. It begins with God, so the Father, so loves the world. And in here I know it says it's past tense. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's how I know that it's the Father. Okay. Let's see. According to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. That right there very short, very small, but extremely powerful. Hopefully you guys are getting something from this. Let's go to the other set of verses that I have here. So we were in Psalm. Now we're going to go to uh, Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Starting in verse 8. With this mindset, if, if, if we can have this mindset of compassion, and compassion is not always being in somebody's life. Sometimes compassion looks like getting out of their life. I'm telling you, some of you just want to stay there so then you can have another tally mark that says, I fixed another one. I helped that person see the light the right way. That's not how this works. If you're really honest with yourself, you're too dang stupid. To really do it the right way. You don't love. And you don't have the knowledge. Oh, you think you have knowledge because you have all these books. That you you have this degree. Because you have all this experience. Oh, yeah. Those things can be good. I'm not I'm 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 definitely not knocking them. What I'm saying is those things are your God then. Because you're taking action based on those things. How about we take action? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Renee said, say it louder for the back of the class. <laughs> See, when 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 I look, I mean, I I have stuff on my wall. I mean, there's I, but <clears throat> when my compassion. So when I'm feeling something and I take action on it, when the foundation of that is because I have a plaque on my wall or because I read a book or because I had the experience, now 
my action is being dictated by those things instead of God. No, he says, my action, God, is to be determined based on you. Not on me. It's based on you. Now, I may very well have a degree. I don't, but it doesn't matter. I barely graduated high school. I mean, barely. Um, oh, what do we got? John says, many times our theology gets in the way of hearing God's voice and experiencing his love. Thank God for grace and opening our eyes. Come on. See, so we can say through God's grace, I get to apply what I learned in this college, in this class, in this book that I read, from this experience, because God has given me the grace, because God has shown me his love, now I can use my life to speak into yours. Whole different deal. Because my foundation isn't me and my experience. My foundation is still God. I speak into people's lives, and I have for years, in situations that I personally have never experienced, and yet I'm able to help them. Come on. Rachel says we are... We're called, um, he, uh, he calls, um, where called, calls he, he equips. Thankfully, where he calls, he equips. Thankfully, we have his living word, the Bible. And we have him with us. He says, I am in you and you are in me. Where I am, so are you also. So now, we get to, when I speak into somebody's life, they feel my heart. They know that I, I, I am experiencing this pain with them, that I am there with them, even if I haven't personally experienced exactly what they're going through. And it's because partially because I very much believe that it doesn't matter the 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 severity of the sin because James says if you in James 2 I believe it's verse 10 it says if you broke the least you're guilty of breaking them all so now if I haven't done this thing that you're going you got going on I can still walk with you on this because my belief is that I might not have done it, but I'm guilty of it. But God, I thank you that I don't carry that guilt because what Christ did for me is enough. So if what Jesus did is enough, that means that I am enough. So now, I can speak into your life. And you know there's no guilt, shame, control, manipulation, condemnation. There it is. Control and manipulation, you can feel. 
And yet sometimes we still grab onto it because that's the only life preserver that we've been given. And so, all right, let's, hopefully this is helping. Come on. Renee Ray says, yes, feeling their pain, love. See, so now when we're reading, so hopefully you guys have made it to Colossians chapter 3. Starting in verse 8, we'll probably go through 17, but we'll see. Because when we can accept, when we get this, this understanding of compassion, Come on. <laughs> Ray Renee says midnight. <laughs> All right. When we read this, so, so verse 8, so Colossians 3, verse 8, it says, But now you also put them all aside, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive speech from your mouth. Jeff says, sometimes we can ignore our transgressions by our compassionate nature towards others. True. Sometimes that's just a mask for us not to deal with what we got going on in our life. And if that's the case, what we got going on in our life is that we don't understand who we are, who God is made us to be so when we have this come on see so so now if we if we look at love being a general yeah we need identity that's right if we can if we can say love could be at least a partial definition of compassion if, if, if we can go there, well, here it says, put aside anger and wrath and malice and slander and abusive speech from your mouth. I think all of those are, I don't know if you could say opposite of compassion, but all of those that definitely would fight it would go against it. Verse 9 says, do not lie to one another, since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices. Now here you go, verse 10. What did I say in verse 9? It says, do not lie to one another, since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices and have put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. What? So there are that, there's that according to. So there's our boundaries again. There's, there's the borders. There's the, how wide can this go? How deep does this go? What's the width? What's the breadth? What's the height? What's what 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 dimensions are we looking at here? Come on, Jeff said that's a great ver uh, it's a great verse to de-escalate a bad situation. We try really really hard to make this happen in our life. We try. And yet, what does it say? You laid aside the old self with its evil practices. Now, if I do a quick definition, that's your that's your your flesh. You laid that aside, the old self with its evil practices. What's evil practices? Um, trying to live up to the law because you will break the law, which then makes you evil. 
because an evil person is somebody who breaks the law. Real simple. You laid aside. Okay. Let's see. Renee says, sometimes our sinful nature comes back through our words more often. Uh, we forget when we rely on our own wisdom, which is garbage. Come on. See? That's right. Because what we're doing is we are replacing God the Father, God the Son, God Holy Spirit. We're replacing that foundation that baseline with ourselves. So what we do to combat that is we battle to stay in his rest. What was it? What was what was Be gracious to me, O God, according to your loving kindness, God. According to the greatness of your compassion, God. Blot out my transgressions. When we continually keep him as the foundation, when we continually keep him as the one who is enough. We may it may look like we've we've diverted our our understanding. Don't get hung up on that because that doesn't carry as much weight as what he has done. So even when we go way off in the weeds, we don't bring ourselves back. What we do is we go, God, I sure do thank you for your graciousness for your, according to your loving kindness. God, I thank you that you have already dealt with this for me. So here it is saying that since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices and have put on the new self, so if I pause right there, these wonderful understanding of putting on is being engulfed with i believe that's how it was that there is this immersion into because putting on that kind of implies work yeah you know, put your arm through here hopefully your your head goes through the head hole instead of through an arm and you know because that's how you'd get dressed. I'm just telling you, you'd have a sock hanging off your ear and you'd just. So this having put on the new self, this is just being engulfed by the new self. What's the new self? Well, thanks for asking. The quick understanding, it's the born again believer. Because now your flesh has died and your born-again believer state of life is in the spirit. You are now a spiritual being. You're no longer connected to Adam being born of the dust of the earth and God breathing life into him. Instead, that part of you that you died when Christ died on the cross once you believed it and the new you which is nothing like the old you is now even though you look typically you'll look the same not always but typically now you're born again but now you're born of the spirit not of the flesh there you go. D said, yep, be engulfed in Christ. So it says that, and having put on the new self, so having been engulfed in the new self, who is being renewed 
to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. That's not your effort. That's being done on your behalf for you. Now let's talk. A, let's look at what this renewal looks like. What are we? What are we thinking here? What's what? What's going on here? Well, verse eleven says, "A renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew." Now, if I pause right there just for a moment, are you living today? Like there is no distinction between Jew and non-Jew. My guess is probably not. Okay. Circumcised and uncircumcised. Barbarian, Scythian, slave and free man. But Christ is all and in all. Come on. It says it right there in verse 11. Colossians 3, verse 11. That wasn't just rote. Come on, yeah, Renee says we are one. Ray, Ray Renee says, ooh, come on. See, well, she didn't say come on, but it was implied. And Renee says, we are one when people see Christ before they see me. Yes. Because we are the body of Christ. Okay, verse, verse 12 says, so, as those who have been chosen of God, have you been chosen of God? Yes, for the good stuff, not the bad stuff. God's, you have been chosen of God. Here it is. So, as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on... Be engulfed with a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Now, if we stop right there, that's the end of verse 13. I want to tell you this. Come on, D says chosen and sealed. Woo! Yes. This right here. Just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. I want you to understand the way that you treat other people is the way that you believe God treats you. Doesn't matter if you believe in God or not. You treat others the way you think God has treated you or will treat you. So if it was like, well, I know God's going to do this, so I'm going to, even though you're not, typically you're not thinking about it like that, but I'm telling you, if you want to really know what you not say, because your words can be very misleading, Right? You can, I can say, oh, no, I'm fine, and be a complete train wreck. Nope, I'm fine. I'm all good. Thanks for asking. It's all good. Okay. 
to really understand what you personally, because you got to do it to you first, what you personally think God the Father, how he will treat you and does treat you. All you have to do is look at how you treat other people. Because I'm telling you, for a lot of you, you go, I haven't done that sin. How dare they? What are they thinking? They even know better. Everybody knows better. <laughs> Come on. We have amen, amen to Ray, to D's chosen. And then she just says, Come on. And then Renee says, That seriously is so eye opening. It is. And it's the truth because it's, it's, it, it's, it's beautiful. When you do it for yourself, then take care of that because what Jesus did is enough. It doesn't matter how big or how small. What Jesus did is enough for you today. Still today. As long as you call it today. Tomorrow, eh, I'll take care of itself. Today. Now when you, because what's going to happen is you're going to treat somebody I'm going to say ugly, mad, mean, whatever. You're not going to like somebody the way somebody's doing something. And when you sit back and you really look at your heart, you will find that you believe the lie that God looks at you the same way. I hear you. All right, Todd. You were just talking earlier about uh, not being so happy with the person on the other end of the phone. How does that work with your relationship? That's a that's that's a valid question. My belief with the father is. The Father is the one that sets the benchmark. Not me. I don't set the benchmark with the Father. That's Old Testament. That's Old Covenant. The people going to God saying, this is how we want you to be in our life. The new covenant, which is between just the Father and the Son. And then we're given Holy Spirit as our seal that what it takes is for us to believe that what Jesus did is enough. The benchmark that God set is the fact that his Son is enough. Now, I can take that foundation of God's the one that sets the benchmark. Now, when I have my interaction, come on, yes, yes, come on. Oh, rules versus real relationship. Yes, absolutely. So now with my, relation, with my relationship, with my conversation with the person on the phone, the benchmark is they're there to help me right business help me in my business that's why i pay them and i pay them quite handsomely they're there to help me that's the benchmark so that's how i can that's how i see that all right 
He says, let's, I want to back up again. He says, he, he calls us holy and beloved. Put on a heart of compassion. If that doesn't sound like love, I'm not sure what is. Put on a heart of compassion. Well, love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love does not brag. Is not arrogant. Does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Does not take into account a wrong suffered. Put on a heart of compassion. Put on, be engulfed in a heart of love. And with that, you have kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. See, that's how you can bear with one another and forgive each other. Because you ain't doing it without love. God's love. God's compassion. He feels our pain. God so loves the world. He feels our pain that he took action and gave his only begotten son. So now I can bear with you because now I'm no longer looking at you going, seriously, stupid, right there. Why in the world would you do something as crazy as that? I mean, I might say that, but typically not. Instead, I can come to you with a heart of compassion. Because now, I'm not doing it for any motivation of control and manipulation. I am showing you compassion because that's who I am. Because what did it say? It says, my new self is being renewed to the true knowledge according to the image of the one who created me. God is love. So now, when I understand my relationship with God, that he actually forgave me. He actually forgives me. He actually will forgive me. It doesn't drive me to purposely do stuff just to test the waters. Now, might that happen at first? It might. But we don't get hung up on that. We Because when we do... We are showing that God is not our God, but that thing or that person is our God. Or ourselves. More than likely, it's yourself. So now verse 14. It says, beyond all these things. Beyond what things? All right, I'll read them again. That's fine. Put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love. which is the perfect bond of unity. Come on, yeah. So powerful. Now here it says, let peace, let the peace of Christ, peace, not of you, not of your situation, not because you controlled it so things could settle down a little bit. No, that's not, that's not the peace that God gives us. Here it says, let the peace of Christ rule 
The one that's in charge rules. The one that dictates your actions is the ruler. It's the one in charge. Let the peace of Christ, not a peace, so not like his, his, his index finger on his left hand. No, let the, the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Come on. Ray Rene said, that peace is what he told me today. His peace. So it says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Okay, let me pause right there. Let's go back over here. Flip a couple pages. Rachel threw out a verse. Do, do, do. In my Bible, I'm reading on page 2,471, if anybody would like to follow along. <laughs> um, uh, Rachel said, John 16.33. What does John 16.33 say? These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world... You have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Come on. In me, you have peace. In the world, you have trouble. Tribulation, I guess. He says, why hang out in tribulation? I have already overcome it. Hang out in me and have peace. Okay. Verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. With all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns, with spiritual so songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, so in what you say or what you do, Whatever you do, because I think that pretty much wraps it up. I mean, he's not talking about what your thinking is, but, you know, whatever you say or whatever action you take, whatever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. So... By my words, I am proving that it is being done in all that Jesus is in my understanding. And through that is giving thanks to God. By my words, and my actions, as long as, I know there's a little caveat to that or whatever, does it reveal God's compassion? Does it reveal what Jesus did for mankind? I think if it does, it lines up. And 
you are automatically giving thanks to God the Father. When you live your life from this point of view that is saying there is no distinction between Jew and non-Jew. There is no distinction between somebody that has um, been circumcised and uncircumcised, which is kind of saying the same thing as the Jew and the Greek, um, or the barbarian, or the Scythian, or the slave and the freeman. There is no distinction. When I can treat you either by word or deed that proves to you that there is no distinction. That yes, Ray, Ray Rene says, Jesus is enough for you and me. So when my words and my actions show that, you hear that, you see that, you... That is giving thanks to God the Father because it is being done through Jesus. Does that make sense? I hope so. <clears throat> Compassion. This love. This, I feel your emotions, and I want to take action based on your emotions. Come on. <laughs> Who? Heck yeah, Rachel. And those were just the verses that I picked for this teaching. We still have lots of other verses. But man, when we have compassion, and it's not a worldly compassion, because you're gonna, if you get into a worldly compassion, you will have control and manipulation as part of it. It's just gonna be what it is. <clears throat> But when we get this godly compassion, then when we read, let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When we read this, now it does start with therefore. We're going to skip that. It says, if there is any encouragement in Christ... Come on. Rachel says, correct. It's a heartfelt, loving compassion coming from Christ. Okay. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, that's the key. We're not talking about everybody. We are only talking about the born again believer, the one who is in Christ. Very important. This isn't this doesn't pertain to everybody, even though it could. It only pertains to those that are in Christ. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion make my joy complete by being of the same mind maintaining the same love united in spirit intent on one purpose Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. 
doesn't mean you're a doormat. And do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. So it says, don't be a doormat. Do not look out merely for your own interests, but look out for others as well. Hold other people as important. Doesn't mean everybody. This is not a you have to hold hands and sing Kumbaya by the fire with everybody. Nope. Nope. Jesus didn't. Okay. I can I can uh, give you a verse. Verses. I can't give you the address, but I can tell you what it says. Basically, Jesus says, oh, you want to get to heaven? Here's all you have to do. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. Then you'll be set. And the people that heard it were like, um, yeah, you know, um, um, I've got a pot burning back at home. I better, I better go, I better go get that. You know, I think my phone is ringing back at the office. I, I better go answer that. Oh, you know what? The, the fa a fax just came in and you know, it, it's, they all left. And there isn't anywhere in the Bible that says that he made sure that they understood what he was talking about. So there you go. Oh. There's such, such, such good stuff. Where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? Then we're going to wrap this one up. So thinking about compassion, I'm going to hit you with some verses here. Um, oh, before I get there, is that what we're going to do? Um, let's talk about dispensing some true justice. This world needs true justice. Today more than ever. Okay, well, let's go to Zechariah, shall we? In the Old Testament... Towards the end, chapter 7, verse 9, says, Thus, yeah, thus has the Lord of hosts said, Dispense true justice and practice kindness and compassion each to his brother. You can say, well, Todd, you're reading that wrong. Maybe. I think I'm reading it in a way that lines up with who God is. He says, you want to dispense true justice? Because we need justice. Just, we, here's how you dispense. So give out true Justice. Practice kindness and compassion. You you want them to feel justice? Practice kindness and compassion. Just saying. That's what it says right there. Zechariah. Chapter 7, verse 9. Okay. So now I'm going to hit just a few, well, yeah, some. Four or five, maybe. Compassion. So hearing God's heart for compassion. Having love being at least part 
of the definition. Love being part of the definition of compassion. At least that. No, you know, Ray Renee says, oh man, that's a hard one to swallow, but truth. Again, what is kindness? If if I want to practice, if I want to dispense true justice, and my dispensing of justice is kindness. Again, kindness can be, um, you're not going to be around me at all. And I'm going to do what it takes to make sure that you're not around me. Because I'm telling you right now, that is me showing you kindness. Me having compassion for you. Because if I didn't have kindness towards you or show compassion for you, I'd want to be locked in the same room with you for like three minutes. Um, and not have anybody know who was in there or if anybody came back out. Um, no, Ray, Renee. She says, praying for them. Heaps coals onto them, right? <laughs> and then she does laugh. Um, even though she said it jokingly, some of you have that as an understanding. I'm going to do it because I know it's going to heap coals. So just not good stuff. I tell you, here's one of the things. Back in the day, that would be my flesh, lust for justice. Come on, Jeff, that's right. So back in the day, we'll just say somebody done me wrong. We'll just... So Ray Ray Renee says, gotta love like Jesus, but it's hard. You know, that's hard. It's only hard when we don't think that our sin is as bad as theirs. You don't have to like the person. You don't have to like the person at all. You don't even have to say that you love them. So we'll just say that person done me wrong, done me, done me dirty. And I was very specifically told not to pray for them. Now, this isn't a, uh, for everybody in all situations, I'm telling you what happened to me in one situation. Because prayer is so powerful that prayer can and very much does change the course and direction of somebody's life. I can pray for you, even if you're not around. I don't even have to send it to you in a, in a text. I can pray for you. You can pray for me. And your prayers can have such an effect that it can change my life. Absolutely. And so I was told not to pray for the person that did me wrong. And it's like, well, that seems a little counterproductive because, you know, because we're supposed to love those who persecute us and blah, blah, blah. They weren't ready. 
to have their life changed. So, just something to keep in the back of your head. All right, let's hit a couple more verses here. Few. No, we won't say a couple. We'll say a few. Okay. Thinking on compassion, and then we'll wrap this up. Compassion. God's heart. He feels, and then he takes this action. So here we go. So in Matthew, Matthew 9, 13, it says, But go and learn what this means. I desire compassion, not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So there you go. Oh, good. She said, I, I totally understand. Wow. All right. So learn what this means. I desire compassion and not sacrifice. See, you want somebody to sacrifice. You want somebody to be punished. You want somebody to clean up their mess. Sometimes cleaning up the mess is the right thing to do. But only when Jesus is enough is still the foundation. Okay, here's another one. So Matthew, that was Matthew 9.13. This is Matthew 9.36. Seeing the people, so Jesus seeing the people, he felt compassion for them. Because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. So he felt compassion for them. Okay, how about Matthew 12.7? It says, but... If you had known what this means, I desire compassion and not a sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent. How do you condemn the innocent? Well, you can condemn the innocent when the innocent are innocent, not because they're innocent, but because they believe in the one who makes them innocent. You're going to have to rewind that. I'm not going to repeat that one. If you would have known what this means, I desire compassion and not a sacrifice. How many people do you have going through your life that you are requiring a sacrifice from? God says, if you only understood that I desire compassion and not a sacrifice. Okay. Uh, Matthew 14, 14 says, when he, Jesus, went ashore, he saw a great crowd and felt compassion for them and healed they're sick. Now, Mark 1, 41 says, Moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing. Be cleansed. Now, I'm going to wrap this up in uh, uh, just today. I was chatting with somebody. And they had been dealing with an uh, infection this whole week. Hey, Rossi, man. I'm just wrapping things up here, brother. Glad you could tune in, though. So, so this person has been, um, had been dealing with this infection. They're taking antibiotics for it uh, since Monday. And today is Thursday, so three and a half, four days However, you want to count it. And uh, they were showing me pictures of this infection. And my thinking was that, you know, it was a, it was a, a 
it was a good size red infection spot. <clears throat> so, I'm created and have the heart of compassion. So, I tell them, you know, feel my hand on that spot. Now, they're nowhere close to me. We're, we're doing this on the phone, right? Speak to it. Don't, you know, be healed. And then we, we continue our conversation. I will do that, Ross. Um, I'll speak on that in a second. And then I had said, uh, you know, Keep an eye on it. Look at it uh, tomorrow. You know, you know, you should be good to go. And I said, you know, my expectation is that you've already experienced healing. Well, so they take another picture, and sure enough, you can see it has changed. Uh, D says, I've got to run. I love you all. God bless you all. Thanks for another great teaching. Thanks for tuning in. Blessings. Marashi says, please keep me in prayer as I travel to Yonkers, New York. I will be leaving Thursday. Absolutely. So that was just kind of cool to be able to see. It wasn't, I don't know how long it was. I don't know that it was 10 minutes. But it was, you could see the the redness in the with the, the infection. And they were taking the antibiotics and everything for the last, since Monday. So today's Thursday. And then just... Texting, well, and it's a spiritual thing, but you could see, you put the, the picture side by side, and you could see a vast improvement. It wasn't gone, but you could see a vast improvement. So, compassion. Okay, let's wrap this up. Rossi, we speak to you and for you and around you protection and love peace that surpasses understanding safe travels guidance of Holy Spirit that you go in the direction that God has for you. In Jesus' name. All right, everyone. Hopefully you were able to, to, to take something from this and, and be able to apply it to your life, which helps you with your understanding and your relationship between you and God, God and you, which then you will see between you and other people and other people and you, but it's much more important because Christianity is really a response. Oh, very good. Rashi said he's going to re retrieve his father's things out of storage. Good deal. And so with this Christianity being a response, hopefully this teaching helps in your response to life. I want to thank you all for, for watching this, viewing this live, as well as all of the comments, all of the, the shares to share this video or the YouTube one and speaking of YouTube. Hello, Sharon. 
and oh, Nate probably and Eric and I'm not sure who else. And so thank you for sharing this. Thank you for all the reactions. It's good to have closure, Rossi. And then Renee Ray says good night. Thank you again. So, so needed these revelations tonight and confirmation along with a better way to understand uh, better uh, God's love and compassion. Come on. Good. Jeff says amen and good night, everyone, and God bless you all. Let's see. Todd, may your loving cup of compassion be renewed. Amen. Valerie says thank you. Uh, thank you. Good night. Come on. Good night, family. Wonderful. All right, everyone. Thank you. And, you know, I think we should do this in a week. <laughs> all right, all. Bye for now.